Are you wood curious? Well, in this episode, I've got a unique woodworking problem to solve. And I also have a couple of insights that you're not gonna wanna miss. This project is a corner cabinet for the Viroqua Public Market, and it's a 45 degree corner. You see, the market has some interior walls where this outside angle is 135 degrees, which means the inside angle of this interior room is 45 degrees. Now, in order to cut the angles for the cabinetry pieces, they need to be 22 and a half degrees. But that doesn't mean that I set my angle gauge on my table saw at 22 and a half degrees. And that brings me to my first insight. The world's best conversation killer is geometry. Zero is gonna be... So you're always left to do some kind of conversion in your head, and that's not fun. Most table saws won't allow the complementary angle of 67.5 degrees to be cut in the range that it offers, so I had to build a panel cutting sled to get that severe angle. The legs are just two by fours that I found in the garage. The legs are two by four scrap lumber and I spray paint them black so they blend into the corner shadows. For the cabinetry itself, I used smaller standalone modules in part to help me build the interior shelving. I relied on pin nails of various lengths to put the cabinetry together. One of the problems that I encountered building this cabinet is that once this severe angle is assembled, you can't get inside of it to drill. So the solution I came to was to build the shelves from the inside out and then to build up each module as I completed them. And adding hardwood shelf slats using that pin nailer is one of the most fun things about this build. I chose reclaimed maple flooring for the face frame. I attached the face frame with glue and pin nails.
Now the purpose of this display cabinet is really to sell product. So I added lights to really showcase what's inside. And in the spirit of making this more of a showcase, I added a side cabinet porthole so you could see inside from a different point of view. I really like how this build is turning out, so much so that I'm gonna use my branding iron to put my mark on the side. Now my little sister commissioned this project and asked that it would be lockable. So I struggled with glass versus plexi, what kind of hinges, what kind of lock sets, but I ultimately decided on plexiglass. I got the sheet through McMaster Car, it's quarter inch. I did a rough fitment to the face frame. And then for the first time ever, I did a flame edge finish on the plexiglass. And one thing that I think looks really cool and is very functional is this hardwood wall anchor made out of scraps of maple, oak, and walnut. All right, let me show you some of the details on this project because the details make this project. And I'm working to a set of specifications. So it had to be lockable. Here's the lock. All right, I decided to go with quarter inch plexiglass and I did a flame edge finish for the first time. You can see the glass like quality on that edge. This is a macro lens, so that's really, really close up. These hinges are the frameless type. Other features include mini LED spotlights two walnut slatted shelves. I got some really nice brass wood screws to tidy up this porthole. And doesn't that look so pretty? There's my eye. Now here's the installation. Getting it set in place. 
Getting the power reconnected. Screwing the cabinetry back down to the base. It's looking good. My sister loaded it all up with product and here it is. This project presented a lot of unique challenges and from that came some creative solutions. I hope you enjoyed following along today. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you on the next one.